yeah and then i just kept traveling for for a while until finally i settled back down in san francisco and uh and then, you know, me and my wife got back together. You know, we were we were on and off uh, for years. And uh, but it was like it was just time. And, you know, she was she's always been the one. So mm. it was like I never knew you and my wife's Japanese and I never knew her in her own country. And uh, I was like, let me just go to Japan and, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So I get to know you in your cultural context because we met in school. You know what I'm saying? She was an exchange student. Wow. I didn't yeah, know that. yeah. Wow, that's awesome. So, like, when I went to uh, Tokyo, Japan, uh, the day, uh, a week after I got there, we were supposed to get married on that Friday, which was the 311 earthquake. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huh, I, huh. I'm, from, I'm from Orlando, man. I'm from yeah. Florida. So it's like, I know, I know earthquakes. Uh, I know uh, tornadoes, hurricanes. But earthquakes, it was like, <laughs> you know, I was watching buildings sway. I was watching uh, people lose balance. You know, I was waiting in front of City Hall. We were just going to get married and all these people, you know, it was it was nuts. You know, subway stopped. My wife, she, I think she walked like four hours. You know what I mean? She was, she was at work. Wow. And uh, I was jet lagged too. And uh, so we ended up getting married that Monday. Wow. Yeah. That's great, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got you you you've lived a, a few lives, you know what I mean? Like there's so many things. But um yeah, yeah. Yo, so now you're back in the states. Um welcome back. Yeah. Um things are still horrible. Uh <laughs> maybe worse, debatably. Um you know, so I mean, how has it been getting your footing? I mean, I I feel like it's been really amazing timing because you know when i hit you up to to put this back out i mean i should say to you too i've been uh, you know saying it but like um you know basically i was in one of the many quarantines i mean i'm still sort of in a quarantine to some degree because i don't really do anything anymore um and in new york that's like a drastic difference um yeah. than in some of the smaller cities where you, your life doesn't change that much besides you see less people i'm actually like just not doing shit so i'm in here doing work in a studio and like I'm in quarantine and you know somewhere along the line like I saw the files for for human cloud abandonment and I was like you know what I want to listen to this again like I hadn't heard it in a while and I threw it on and I was like whoa like this is still hitting me the same way it hit me in wow. 2007 or 2006 when I first heard it and you know um at the same time you know, me and Shorefuse were, were building about putting together like what became Uncommon Restoration, um, which, you know, I can show you and and others, you know, this is the result uh -oh. of that conversation. So that's beautiful, man. You know, and wow. it came out really dope, man. Yours will be going out in the mail once we once once this weekend is over. And, yeah. um, you know, we were talking about that at the same time and, and it all came together perfectly. You know what I mean? Like where it was like you know, we, we were just about to start this seven inch label and, and then I had just heard Human Cloud Abandonment and it just felt like the perfect way to start, you know. Um, oh man, thank you. So, you know, what I was leading to is like that basically all happened and I hit you up and I had no idea that you were coming back to the United States. So it's it's pretty crazy that like, you know, you've <laughs> your album has returned to the masses and you have returned in physical form to the US. So how's that, that going? How's that going for you so far? Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's like, uh, you know, there's just so many revelations, man. The United States government doesn't care about its people, doesn't take care of its people. Our healthcare system is a sham. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in Japan, I've, I've probably been to the doctor in Japan more times than I've ever been to the doctor in my whole life in living <laughs> in America. Mm -hmm. Like any, any little thing, my wife, oh, you should go to the doctor. I'm like, you know, unless my arm's falling off, it's like, it's, I'll just let it heal or something, you know? Um, so thank God for, you know, there were, yeah, I, I was able to go to the doctor, man. Uh, and then seeing, you know, us go through things here, as far as what people go through with, with their health and, you know, you go to different hospitals here, it's a different price in Japan, yeah. the price is the same. There's a cap, you know what I mean? They can't charge you something different from hospital to hospital. 
and they pay 70% of your health bill. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but not only that, but just with the realization of, uh, of how America ends and begins with race, how yeah. uh, everyone plays their role in this caste system, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Four white people are in the middle, and they're the buffer between rich and and you know black people, and even middle class white people. Um, and just to watch it play out, and watch what happened, you know, with the the insurrection and all that, um, it's been a it's been a tailspin, dude. It has been dizzying, you know. I would um, imagine so, man. Like, and yeah. you know what you said about like, you know, America's obsession with race is is different than other countries i mean you know you've written about different things in japan and yeah. plenty of people have written and talked about things in europe and and i am smart enough and wise enough to to know for myself but also to listen to to people of color that like things are not like a shangri-la in in like europe or in, or in asia or any place like that in terms of race but i just feel like you know, in the people that I have talked to, including yourself, um, including traveling to the United Kingdom myself, and and you know, uh, my good friend Duke Zero One, and and you know, Last Sons, and touring with them, and we had a lot of these deep conversations out there. Like, it it, it is different here. Um, it's different for historical reasons, obviously. Um, you know, and and it's it's strange, man. It's it's you know, you come to grips with it. Um, I don't know if you come to grips with it as much as you, I I hope that I at least understand it, you know, what, what the difference is. It's, it's very, it's very sad. Um, Mm -hmm. Everything that is said and done in the United States, um, you know, sometimes justified and sometimes um, not, you know, travels back through racial lines and, um, it, it, it definitely creates a feeling where nobody is allowed to breathe, uh, particularly people of color. And um, that's a huge thing. And I didn't, I didn't, I wouldn't say that I didn't understand that before I traveled abroad. And I've only been to the United Kingdom. I've been up to Montreal, but that's as far as I've traveled um, outside of the United States. And I, I was lucky enough that when I was in the UK that I didn't just like play London and go home. Like I, I did like eight dates out there. So I saw pretty much the whole country, um, which is great um, and fortunate. And, you know, me and Duke and P, uh, Furious P, who's a DJ in Last Sons, you know, when we toured, we compared notes on the health system too. And like some of the things that I was telling them about, like how, you know, with certain insurances, you have to have a referral to see a specialist and you have to wait right. to make an appointment. You know, you have to make a second appointment and then you have to make a follow up appointment and you have to make a third appointment and, you, you know, you have to get permission to do that appointment and like their heads were spinning where they were just like, I, yeah. can't, I don't understand why that would be that way. And, and, you know, we can step back from some of that stuff for the sake of this conversation. But, yeah, I, I totally hear you. And, and it, it is. Well, yo, one thing I want to say hearing yeah. you speak is mm-hmm. uh, that's interesting. It just came to me just listening to you is like the generational gap. Like, yeah. I remember I, I have a poem, uh, it's on title, but I have a line that that, that mentions like a, a white supremacist rapper. And, you know, like it was supposed to be white supremacist rapper. The term was supposed to be an oxymoron. Yeah, you know? yeah. So it's like where you come from, where we come from, the era that we come from in the underground, you know, there was a point where like we was like c- together, you know yeah. what I mean? Yes. And like it was a black art form, but it was like whoever was in it was respecting the craft or respecting the space. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Yes. But now you really do have white supremacist rappers, dog. It's weird. Yeah. It, it, it is it is strange, man. And it's hard. You know, I, I find challenges in being, you know, the age that I am, which is 42, coming from the era that I come from where I did see that. That was part of my life. And in a lot of ways, you could say like that, you know, from a hip hop perspective, you know, um, looking outward from hip hop culture outside to the rest of the world, um, things are worse. You know, like it's just that simple. Like, you know, I don't know if it was my own white privilege or not, you know what I mean? But like for me, I didn't think about that stuff, you know? I mean, I understood 
you know, my whiteness and, and the culture that I was in and the respect that I needed to bring to the culture. Right. I fully understood that. And that was very established and continues to this day, obviously. But I also wasn't always like, you know, not, it, it just wasn't as much of a powder keg as it is today. And I think a lot of that is because, you know, you do have a lot of, of white people involved in hip hop that, you know, aren't my age, aren't from my region, aren't mm. from my history, you know, didn't, you know, come up listening to Stretch and Bob and going to Fat Beats and going to New Yorkin and interacting with people that looked and, and come from different backgrounds from themselves. You have like these sort of like white hip hop fiefdoms these days that are, that are different. And, you know, it's not a matter of me trying to knock anybody. It's just a natural progression of the internet and the way that everything has grown probably too fast has led yeah. some people into aspects of hip hop culture where they don't fully understand what they're interacting with. And right. it kind of makes it harder in general. I mean, hip hop is something that brings people together. You right. know, that's always what it's been for me. So it is, it is really stunning. Like, and, and, but to the point of the conversation is a lot of that comes from the United States. You know, when you go overseas, you know, I know that racism is there and I know that white privilege is there, but it, I, I can't put my finger on it because I'm not a person of color, like how it's different or why um, mm. exactly. But well, being like going over there, man, the most fascinating thing was, I mean, it could be anything from, you know, uh, customer service and the way they treat you just is mm. with the utmost courtesy, you know, like an example that I, I was I was using before I was writing about was um, I went to go for my birthday. I went to go. Uh, me and my wife went, and uh, I got a pair of shoes, right? And uh, and I, you know, the guy puts the shoes in the bag, and I go grab the bag, and the, and Japanese is like, wait, wait. I was like, all right, dude gets done, gives you know, gives us the receipt and everything. He takes the bag. He points towards the door. He walks us to the door. He hands me the bag with two hands, which is a sign of respect. Okay. And he gets the bag, and and he's holding the door for, uh, for us too. And he bows, and he stays bowed until right. we are out of sight. Right. I've never been treated like that before in my life. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like it's just things like that 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 you know different uh, things at the same time though at the same time. You know, I, I, like, uh, you know, one of the pioneers was writing about race in, in Japan by McNeil, the, the uh, Japan, uh, Japan Times columnist writer. You know, one of his uh, well-known essays is about no one will sit next to you on the subway. You know, mm -hmm. as a black person on the subway, people are scared to sit next to you on the subway. So, like, a lot of times the seat next to me will be empty. Wow. Yeah, and, and it's weird how... Uh, basically, like, okay, so, you know, Black people in America are supposed to be a subjugated race, just mm -hmm. as in Japan, uh, Koreans and Chinese are, are subjugated as well because of the, uh, Japan, you know, they, they were trying to build their empire. They were basically trying to copy off of uh, world powers, you know. Um, basically, yeah. it was like, it was a thing of, if we don't start conquering shit, we're going to get conquered as well, maybe. Um, but they definitely were inspired to start raping and pillaging from, you know, raping Nan King to Korea, all kinds of stuff. Um, so they are in Japan, they're like, uh, and the Anu people, same thing. The Anu people are like Indians in, in, in America. So like they, you right. know, they were, they went through some form of, you know, dying off, being killed off. Uh, there were at some point, they weren't allowed to even reproduce. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so in black people in Japanese context, it's like we are thrown into that, to that sort of perspective, but we're at the end of the line in terms mm -hmm. of that, but it, but it's fueled by the, the American propaganda that is exported on top of like, okay, well, you're like Koreans, but also your own country says this about you too, but mm -hmm. we love your, we, we love black culture though. Yeah. You know I mean? they'll, they'll, they've had a black a black nightclub but they don't allow black people in it wow it's like a reggae club 
Jesus. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, I ain't got to nobody trying to shoot me, though. You know what I'm saying? At the same time. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, I I don't know exactly how to put this, but, like, it it seems to me, looking from the outside, that, like, you know, a lot of countries like Japan, there is still, like, um, fear of the unknown kind of racism, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, a a sort of, like, a um, you don't look like me, therefore... I don't trust you, you no. know, um, whereas that sort of strips down racism to its core, you know, mm. um, in this context, whereas in the United States, it obviously has large, well, primarily historical context to white supremacy, to slavery, to um, Jim Crow oppression, to so all of those things that um, systematic racism that have not left the back of if not the front of a lot of white brains in the united states and that Mm. affects the way that black brains react to it Mm. and without that sort of like circular you know you know cyclical thing going on with systematic racism Mm. it's just like raw fear in these other countries um you can yeah. let me know if I'm right. You, you would be a much better judge of it than me, but that's, well, that's what I, mean, I see, you know? Yeah, I mean, there, there's there's fear, definitely fear, but also, like I said, it's, it's, it's the media too. I mean, yeah. Well, it's, We're exporting it's, this supremacy to other countries. Absolutely, I see that. But they do have their, any, any basically any country in the world who has, who has, you know, dabbled in some form of like, I'm trying to conquer this place and rape and pillage, has some form of superiority complex you know what i mean if you are able to successfully subjugate another race then that seems to sustain itself in in their minds even after it was unsuccessful uh there's some belief in in superiority and that seems to be used to be able to uh sort of keep the status quo or Everyone plays a, a different role in in this in the caste system, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, definitely being back here, man. This is like the it's weird. Like I said, it's no place like home. At the same time, home is fucked up, and it's yeah. always been fucked up. But having a new, like, uh, looking at it through a new perspective, uh, I, I'm still, you know, I've been here since what mid September, so I'm still unpacking and. And, you know, my wife and my child are still unpacking. The one thing that's hella positive, though, is, you know, my my daughter is like, oh, there's other black people. Oh, it's not weird to be black. Oh, it's, I'm just a, I'm just a black kid, like, and I'm Japanese. But, you know, there's other people that look like me, look like my dad. And uh, and then and then the, the freakiest thing is there's no there's not a lot of Asian people here, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like the like the, the flip of everything is just like crazy. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, there, you know, like depending on what region of the United States you're in, yeah, it would be a 180 flip or or somewhere in between. You know, that that is anything else that's that's positive, like any any uh any basic um, things that, that you're enjoying, man. You, you is there is there anything enjoying... any fun stuff? <laughs> Do we I'm, have I'm, any I'm, fun I'm, left in this country? <laughs> I, I am I am grateful to be back home. I am. I I, I miss Japan, but at the same time, uh, I'm I'm grateful to be back. I mean, it's it's right or for right or you know right or wrong, better for worse. This is my country, and this is what I know, and. Uh, and I, you know, I don't feel so much as a fish out of water. Uh, I used to really crave that. That's one of the reasons why I went traveling in the first mm. place. Why I left New York, but I did. Mm. You know, I was, I was, uh, you know, I was just a hopeless romantic. Like my whole thing was like, yeah, I just want to go write a great American novel <laughs> to do that. You know what I'm saying?